uh, uh, so we, we are uh, building a new uh, data management and feed processing platform called Ivory. We'll talk about that. Uh, over the last uh, few years, uh, for adoption at Inmobi, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, data processing happens on Hadoop. In fact, exclusively happens on Hadoop. Uh, almost uh, uh, the SQL conventional way of processing data is only I mean, is used only in the database are only used for uh, uh, final last mile delivery of reports. Uh, otherwise, all the processing happens on uh, Hadoop. What we have realized is that uh, there is a need to manage this data in a much more uh, seamless fashion than just looking at it as simply a set of files and directories and have uh, Hadoop jobs run over, I mean running and processing uh, on that. So uh, if you uh, look at uh, uh, you know our uh, uh, use cases, we have uh, about uh, you know 3 billion events. Uh, that flow into our Hadoop system every day and uh, like several terabytes of data and uh, data come in you know uh, in minute wise chunks and hour wise chunks and they need to be processed uh, you know uh, through a pipeline. The pipeline is like a, a steps of multiple process that happens one after the other and uh, they need to just uh, flow through. Now all these pipelines are very SLA sensitive and uh, uh, you know, we have to make sure that they are running uh, on time and nothing breaks. Uh, besides, we also have needs to maintain uh, some kind of retention policy on the data, archival on the data. Uh, we need to be able to copy data across multiple data centers. So there are a lot of these uh, regular uh, life cycle management that we need to do on the feed and also manage the uh, processing. So that's the need uh, that we saw and we have started building this uh, uh, platform called Ivory. I will uh, go over uh, in a bit of detail about the use cases that we are trying to solve with this, uh, with this product. So uh, first is uh, obviously to do with uh, feed management. So what we wanted to stop doing is to look at uh, data as just a bunch of directories and files that come and uh, reside on our clusters. So we wanted to look at them as a logical, uh, you know, kind of table, uh, which is what the hedge catalog, uh, you know, the metadata uh, repository kind of does. So we want to look at them as tables and have these tables manage partitions and uh, the time at which this feed arrives as one of the partitions also. So uh, we also want to make sure that we have, uh, you know, retention policies applied on this uh, data and we remove data that is uh, old. So uh, that's one of the use cases that we wanted to solve. Second one is these feeds that we want to configure in the in, the, in, this, in the platform should be uh, archived after its after its end of life before it's uh, you know kind of removed from the cluster. So that's another uh, use case that we're trying to um, you know get through. And the other one is the feeds may be generated in one of the colos in one of the data centers, and it may be required uh, in another data center for some processing or uh, you know aggregation. So replication is a very important use case for us. Uh, so we, uh, once the feeds are all on the cluster, which means the data is all on the cluster, we need to uh, allow our processing to sit on top of these feeds and consume these feeds. So uh, if you look at a, a classic scenario, logs may flow into one data center, uh, in each of the data centers, and then they may eventually uh, be processed in these data centers, and we may want to consume a final summary of this uh, finally for our reporting or our feedback process. So uh, if, if data were to be uh, unavailable, let's say in one data center due to an outage for instance, uh, data may still be available in the other data centers. So uh, the uh, scenario that uh, what will actually happen in this in this particular scenario is uh, the data that is available from the uh, live uh, data centers would be used for aggregations, uh, but eventually the data from the uh, inactive data center may eventually arrive. So the uh, we, we should be able to uh, kind of go and fill up that uh, gap as and when the data becomes available in an eventual consistency, uh, consistency model. So uh, you could have a processing which runs for a particular hour which may have partial data because of unavailability of data. 
and that may then be uh, you know processing may be completed as and when data becomes available. So that's the uh, dependency. So you may actually uh, you know. One log may be used for processing uh, the data, or it may produce uh, a summary or some kind of uh, analytics, which may then be used for further analytics. So, if the first feed is delayed, it will cause uh, cascading delays uh, in the whole pipeline. So, the uh, what the Ivory system is trying to do is to identify uh, the full lineage of the entire data flow. So, who is dependent on which process depends on which processing depends on which feed and identify this lineage and if any reprocessing is triggered on one of them, it automatically goes and re-triggers the entire pipeline and make sure that all the uh, analysis are consistent with each other. So, that's, uh, that's the uh, lineage use case. So, that's, that's something that we frequently run into. Uh, so, uh, Ivory would basically uh, take care of that scenario as well. Uh, the other use case uh, that uh, this system is trying to solve is, uh, you know, typically what we would do is we will do all the feed processing using a workflow engine and uh, sometimes the retries may not be handled properly. Uh, uh, so, the Ivory system guarantees that uh, there may be retry policies associated, associated with this feed processing pipelines and it will enforce these retry policies on these, uh, uh, on the, on these pipelines. And people also, um, uh, because it's aware of all the feeds in the cluster and all the processing that happens on it, it basically can, uh, you know, provide higher uh, SLA, uh, you know, uh, alertness. So if, if something is going to be uh, missed due to uh, delays or something is uh, data is not available for a particular uh, pipeline to, uh, you know, kick off, then we could, uh, you know. Uh, generate alerts for our operations to look into it and identify uh, the root cause of the problem. Or if the pipelines are stalled because of uh, some uh, job processing delays or job execution delays, even that can be uh, tracked through the system. Uh, also, uh, we, we want to start, uh, you know, allowing HCAT, I mean, a metadata repository like HCAT log integrated into our, uh, into our, into our, into our environment, which will allow our feeds to be registered with this catalog which can make all the consumers consume data without actually uh, you know trying to go to a specific directory in HDFS and trying to access it. So you start looking at uh, Hadoop more like a like a you know data warehouse rather than just a processing uh, cluster, data processing cluster and a storage cluster. So you start looking at it more like a like a data warehouse. And that is uh, what the Ivory system is trying to find the gaps that makes it difficult for us to reach that state and trying to fill those gaps basically. So, uh, if you look at it, uh, architecture is fairly simple. So, what it does is it allows uh, uh, the users to configure uh, three entities in the system, uh, clusters, feeds and process. Uh, clusters is basically something that defines the infrastructure endpoints uh, in our uh, column. Uh, while feeds are basically something that defines what's the schema, the location of, of that in the HDFS, what's the retention policy, uh, what's the uh, you know time cutoff uh, after which the data should be disregarded, uh, and what's the frequency of the speed, etc. So those are the uh, you know elements of the uh, feed. And similarly, a process basically defines uh, the input uh, feeds that it uses and the output feeds it basically uh, generates. So, providing a complete lineage and dependency graph of all data in the cluster and how they are produced and consumed. So, through Ivory system, it's possible to figure out uh, who produced this data, what all process consume this data, what data does it produce, and who is in turn consuming those data. So, you could actually build a complete uh, lineage uh, of, of, of this data. So, if uh, if there is problem in one of the processing pipeline, for instance, that would immediately figure out what are the dependent process that are stalled because of this, and we can take corrective actions and also make sure unblock, uh, you know, uh, the original pipeline. So that's the other thing. Second is uh, the Ivory system through the REST API uh, can talk to the underlying workflow engine and get status of each of the instances that run for the particular uh, feed or process. Say for example, if a feed is configured in the system, 
and it has a replication requirement to copy the data from one cluster to uh, let's say uh, another cluster. Uh, the uh, IV system will automatically trigger off that replication instance every hour and that replication instance uh, is available for us to track to the uh, IV system. Similarly, process executions can also be tracked uh, based on the frequency of the process. A process uh, similar to a feed uh, can be defined to run at a periodic, at a periodic rate and uh, can be made to depend on multiple feeds. So, uh, again, uh, those process instances can be tracked. So, what Ivory does is it does not do much of the heavy lifting. All it does is maintain the state about the dependencies and, uh, you know, allows it to itself to be hooked to the workflow execution path such that it tracks the end of the workflow. The workflow itself is executed by the scheduler, uh, which is uh, open in our case. In, in at Inmobi, we use uh, Uzi for our workflow execution, but uh, the Ivory system is built in such a way that we can plug in a different uh, workflow engine of choice. Uh, so, the workflow uh, engine, once it completes its activity, uh, uh, Ivory uh, would basically interject that execution and uh, get a message through our messaging service uh, back to Ivory and back to the consumers. So, the message flow allows us to figure out what happened to the particular workflow instance or the, uh, the uh, process instance and allow us to manage uh, retries or uh, figure out if uh, data is, uh, you know, basically partially processed and should it be processed again, uh, stuff like that. And it also identifies the execution time and if it is uh, missing the SLA, etc. And will it impact any downstream uh, processing? So all that it is able to identify uh, by uh, hooking itself into the uh, workflow completion uh, path. Um, ultimately, the workflow scheduler then talks to Hadoop to submit the jobs. And uh, for instance, uh, all the things that I spoke about earlier, retention, replication, archival, uh, feed processing, everything is eventually uh, scheduled as a workflow in the workflow scheduler. Ivory does not have a scheduler of its own, doesn't do any uh, heavy lifting. So it basically allows everything to be processed by the scheduler uh, over Hadoop. So everything is a map produced job at the end of the day and uh, that's how uh, it's basically uh, implemented. <coughs> So, I, I guess I uh, uh, mentioned this uh, already. So, basically, you can pick your scheduler of choice. Currently, our implementation is uh, uh, over uh, Uzi. So, it delegates all the scheduling and workflow management to Uzi in, the, in our case. Uh, all the uh, uh, activities are really doing work in terms of uh, the functionality for feed management or for process execution or delegated to the workflow of, uh, execution engine. So, the Ivory system offers a REST API uh, over which, uh, you know, consumers can query the status of the uh, instances that are running uh, in the system and uh, can also uh, manage uh, the life cycle of those instances, basically rerun, schedule, suspend, uh, you know, all the uh, life cycle operations on, on both process instances as well as feed instances. Um, and uh, so that, that's basically uh, how uh, you can use Ivory. So, there are three basic entities uh, in Ivory, which are uh, cluster, feed and process. This is what you basically configure uh, in your uh, system. Uh, cluster uh, is basically the infrastructure component that you uh, work with. So, it provides read, write and uh, workflow and execution interfaces. Uh, basically, it gives you the endpoints of the, of the environment on which this particular Ivory instance is basically going to work. Uh, it also allows you to provide default job configurations that you don't need to repeat. So, cluster-wide default job configurations that you want for all jobs that run in your environment essentially goes into this uh, into this configuration. Uh, your feed definition basically has uh, frequency, uh, uh, cluster on which it is, this feed is valid, the partitions on this feed, uh, the cutoff period after which this feed data is uh, not consumed by any of the consumers, uh, schema uh, which will basically be used for registering with edge catalog, location of uh, where the data is present on HDFS and any ACLs like flow missions, ownerships, etc. So all these basically define uh, the feed. You basically define all data on your cluster as, uh, as a feed definition, as one or more feed definitions basically. 
then process consumes one or more feed instances and produces one or more output its output feed instances uh, you could define your workflow as part of the process definition and the workflow basically gets executed whenever an instance is materialized uh, you can associate retry policies and say uh, when do you want to retry? How do you want to retry? How many times do you want to retry this process if there were to be failures? And uh, what kind of failures should be handled how? Uh, then you also specify if data were to arrive out of order or late for this feed processing pipeline, uh, how do you handle that? So all that are basically policies that are extensible uh, that you can mention in the process definition. So through these uh, three entities that you define here, cluster, feed and process, you basically articulate uh, how, uh, what data is stored on your cluster, on which cluster, and how they get processed and produced. All of that are basically uh, mentioned through these entities. So, uh, we've been using in uh, Ivory for a while, for a little while now. I mean, actually, less than a week now. We just launched this week. Uh, it basically offers only these capabilities, though, much more is on roadmap for us to build over the next quarter and or, or more. We uh, provide feed retention, all the entity managements are all provided. Besides, in terms of functionality, feed retention, process and uh, life cycle, uh, uh, process life cycle management and feed life cycle maintenance. And then it provides, uh, you know, detailed dependency uh, graph on uh, these three entities that are registered with Ivory, uh, CLI and feed availability through JMS. Those are the uh, capabilities that are implemented currently uh, the version that we have uh, in production today. So, uh, this is uh, basically uh, a open source uh, effort. So, we have put the code, I mean, everything happens uh, publicly, so we have put the code out there. So, if anybody has similar problems to work on, uh, so open for collaborations. So, uh, open for questions. Yes. What could be, uh, can you monitor or uh, can, do you have a monitoring or tracking system which can actually track the progress of data inside your workflow processing engine? So as to, as at what node the data is right now in, in Udi? Right, so uh, as part of the uh, status of a process instance, we basically uh, provide the user all the actions that are executing, its current state and along with it, the uh, you know HTTP, HTTP URL to access the log. We also archive the HTTP in mean the log file for uh, processing later, uh, so they are permanently stored in uh, into the IBM system. So uh, yes, the answer is uh, the IBM system provides uh, to the step what is actually happening for running as well as completed uh, workflow or build. Can provide you up to that level. As I understand, the workflow is uh, initiated using an API call. So, what if I have a use case of something like PageRank algorithm which needs iterative MR jobs? So, what, is there a way to do that sort of thing on Ivory? That would need iterative cycles of the workflow. Right. So, iterative cycle. So, how you basically we have similar use cases, right? So, uh, X our data is dependent. I mean, x plus 1 is dependent on x hours data. Is that what you are talking about? x instance is uh, the input for x plus 1 and one first instance. Right, and then it looks back. Correct. So, so that is that that is the standard, that is a regular use case that we support uh, in the system. Basically, you can configure a feed and a feed can be both input and output for in a process. So, it basically allows you to create that cycle. Uh, but only thing is, uh, so basically, uh, you associate a frequency with that feed. Uh, let's say the feed needs to run every five minutes. Uh, zeroth minute file is uh, available, and then you start processing that. You produce fifth minute file, and fifth minute file automatically becomes the input for the tenth minute uh, processing. As soon as the data becomes available, it will start triggering. So it won't trigger unless the previous or previous instance is available. So it will create. It has the ability. So you, for every iteration, you make another HTTP or API call to the workflow. No, we, have, we will create the workflow appropriately as required to execute this use case and schedule it in Woozy, uh, in our case, and let Woozy handle that. So we we basically uh, will be able to express all these requirements of appropriately in Woozy. But Woozy only supports direct uh, DAGs, right? So it, does, it has one way. Like, so the point is, each DAG completes and generates one workflow, one one instance, and the next instance of the workflow depends on the previous instance. So each DAG basically completes 
on the next DAG execution depends on the previous DAG's output. So that way you maintain the DAG's uh, you know uh, semantics uh, and allow Uzi to execute it. The next thing is basically loops back on. <laughs> So, as I see, are different actually is uh, fairly. Yeah, the question was uh, the scheduler is uh, is open, so you can integrate with any scheduler, is what I mentioned. So, the question was uh, uh, Uzi and uh, Askaban, for instance, are very different. Uh, they are not on par. So, how do you plan to integrate? So, basically, we the system is open for extension, that's how it is built. Uh, so, if there is a lot of gap in uh, in a, another scheduler, then it becomes difficult for us to implement. So, uh, we have to find a scheduler that provides most of the capabilities that we need. So, Askaban may fall fairly short. So, uh, if, if we have a different scheduler which is very close to what Uzi can do, uh, then probably that's a good choice. Askaban, with Askaban, what actually happens is that there may be a lot more to be. So, what we have in our implementation, how it works is uh, the uh, uh, Ivory system basically uh, takes in the process requirements and maps them to a workflow uh, input that the workflow engine accepts it, I mean, takes it. So, we have a feed mapper and a process mapper which maps the Ivory process definition into corresponding uh, you know, input that the workflow engine understands. So, in case of Oscar Barney, we may have to. Pardon me? You actually generate the Uzi workflow itself? Yeah, we do. We do. So, we actually. Uh, we, we see a definition of configuration to Uzi library with uh, some sample input. Yeah, sure. I, I will just uh, put it up. Uh, so, uh, we. So, uh, to complete the answer for the previous question, right? So, if you end up, if you want to use Askaban, for instance, you may have to do a lot of functionality that Uzi offers, for instance, data availability, uh, which may be non trivial to do and uh, which may make it very hard. So, if you have a similar or on par uh, workflow schedule, you can probably integrate with that. But as of now, we found uh, Uzi to be uh, very suitable for uh, most of our requir requirements. Hence the choice of Uzi in our case, in our default implementation. Right. So, uh, archival will be implemented uh, basically uh, through, uh, I mean, again, multiple implementations can be there for archival. Uh, in our case, we just archive it to uh, a box with a large storage and uh, eventually the storage can then be moved into a tape or whatever. So, uh, how we implement the archival is, we provide a policy for the archival and an implementation for the archival and it is extensible. So, we will have a default implementation. For, so, uh, most of the things that we have are uh, uh, open for extension. So, nothing is like uh, uh, finalized. So, I can write a XAM implementation. Absolutely. So all that it basically uh, make sure that we want to have a scalable system and we need to be able to schedule it. Uh, so we will ultimately end up running it as a map produced job. That will be the only uh, uh, restriction. All right. So I'll just. Um, so. Uh, that's how a cluster definition looks like uh, in Ivory. So you basically define multiple interfaces and uh, endpoints. Uh, so here in this case, uh, we have uh, read-only endpoints, write endpoints, execute endpoints, workflow endpoints, messaging endpoints, uh, and what colo it does. The colo is very important for replication. So the colo is also a property of the uh, cluster. So uh, this is the. Uh, Again, this will go through a lot of iteration in our next release because we have a basic version that is uh, launched in production. So, this is our feed uh, basically looks like. Feed uh, has multiple uh, partitions. Uh, it can belong to a feed group. Uh, then there is frequency for this, uh, late cutoff period, what clusters is this feed uh, available on and what's the range on time range for which it is valid in that cluster. 
and what's the retention period for this feed, uh, the location where it is uh, present in HDFS, ACLs and uh, schema. Okay, that's how that's what uh, a feed uh, uh, looks like. So, so uh, retention. If you look at it, uh, there is an action here. So, we support uh, uh, multiple actions. Delete will nuke the data. Uh, change permissions will just change the permission so that it's inaccessible and keep it somewhere. Uh, and the archival will basically move it to archival. If the retention action is archival, there will be a separate section in the feed which is not displayed here, shown here, which will tell how the archival has to be done. So that's how uh, basically. It will be so um, finally, the process definition. Uh, basically, define the cluster on which you want to execute, the frequency for this process, the validity time periods. And then you define inputs and outputs, uh, and then you specify the property that you want to send to the workflow. And then you can finally specify what's the workflow to execute. In this case, uh, the workflow engine is Uzi, and uh, the user has written a Uzi workflow. That will get, sorry, that will get executed. Um, and this is, in fact, the only engine that is supported for workflow execution. But you could, you know, in integrate with say Spring Batch or whatever. It's just a DAG that needs to execute and make sure that that gets executed. So that's how um, this will be taken care. And then finally, you have rate policy and uh, process. There's also a late cutoff, late uh, processing section, which is not in this example, which will say uh, if input A is delayed. Uh, what do you do about it? If input B is delayed, what do you do about it? So you basically have uh, late policies also uh, you can mention here and the system will act on that. So uh, that's how do we give the input data which uh, converts it into an UDP workflow, XML workflow? How do you give uh, yeah, in what format do you give the input so that the uh, UDP workflow XML is generated? Uh, so this is all you give to the Ivory system. The only thing that will be Uzi ish will be the workflow XML that you will generate here. Okay? The workflow XML works on this contract. You basically use variable names uh, which is same as this name, input and output, and define your workflow. That, that, those two variable names and this variable name are the only things available for you. It's like you write the workflow as a function which takes three arguments. The three arguments here are the name of the inputs and the properties. Name of the outputs. So within within those constraints, you can write whatever you want inside the workflow XML, and it'll just execute. So the workflow XML is completely a black box as far as, as Ivory is concerned. It makes sure that the inputs, uh, the output, and the properties are passed onto the workflow. So, so in a sense, if you were to change the workflow engine, then all your existing job metadata has to be really ported to the new engine workflow language also. I mean, so. I mean, uh, in a sense, you are not capturing the workflow metadata in, in your own representation. We, 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 we plan to, uh, but we, we, we decided not to do that because uh, different workflows may offer a uh, wide range of capabilities. So, if we were to offer a workflow uh, you know, uh, definition in our Ivory process, then it has to be a superset of everything so that we can talk to any engine. If it was, if it were a super set of that, and if we don't work with the appropriate engine, we would have unsupported operations in that. So it will be a, it will be fairly complex uh, to manage. It need not be super set in the sense that you can represent whatever Uzi things you want to and have a have your own representation. I mean the thing is that you otherwise you cannot replace the workflow engine so easily. Right. All your production is running on lots of Uzi workflows. There is no way that you can convert that to a new engine easily. I, I agree. So, I mean, normally what uh, uh, the standard things that you will basically execute on a Hadoop environment are captured in Uzi. That's fairly uh, you know, adequate. But uh, if we could probably map to that. But if uh, the choice of allowing it to go with the Uzi for now is because we didn't want to take that uh, burden of managing the workflow uh, definition in our uh, system. So we thought of delegating, chose that model. But if there are like a lot of use cases for us to work with different ones, and especially if it becomes widely adopted uh, and there are uh, scenarios where 
people were wanting to switch from one scheduler to another scheduler for instance. It's a frequent use case. We'll definitely look to implement that. So in a sense, Ivory is another workflow engine. I mean, and and it's having some more the workflow engine uh, and 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 a policy yeah. engine also. I mean, so a mix of both. Right. And you have your well-defined policies for archival retention. I mean, the fixed set that you know about. So you are ma managing them and running things mostly via OZ. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh,